are actually live. This is a live recording where we're gonna be going into what I personally think are the most important secrets that I care about in everything that I teach. And what I wanna do is I wanna give a brief outline of what I think is the most important thing that you can learn from me and the most important things that you can learn in life as far as your health, wealth, relationship, and higher purpose and everything that you care about. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go backwards a little bit and cover some of the secrets that are really, really good when you're new. Because a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about here are very, very relevant to you when you're in your 40s or your 50s and you've kind of done the rounds, you've accomplished certain things and you've hit a point where, um, you know, the smaller things you don't care about anymore, but you probably did care about those things at some point. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of contrast where my focus might be, but then if you're newer, I also wanna go into a little bit where your focus might be if you're a little bit new. Now, by the way, as we go into this, and I'm just gonna mention this a couple times in this broadcast, we have free events coming up. I've got a brand new free event coming up in Philadelphia, June 25th, New York City, June 28th. Those are both uh, two full day free events, and you're gonna see a ton of people there, and you're gonna see me on stage, and it's just gonna be going crazy, it's gonna be going wild, it's gonna be a ton of energy in the room, <clears throat> and I'm gonna be covering all this stuff. It's gonna be super duper awesome, okay? So it is Philly and New York that are coming up very, very soon. Seattle's coming up, San Fran's coming up, Chicago's coming up, we're gonna be in Miami, we're gonna do a whole Florida tour, uh, Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, we're gonna do a Texas tour, Dallas, Houston, Austin, we're gonna do Los Angeles, San Diego, we're gonna be everywhere, okay, all over the place. The team is also doing this all over the world, my team, and so if you're in medium-sized cities or cities far away from me, you can still go to www.selfhelpfreetour.com and you can check out the list and and I'd recommend that you get in there because I'm actually gonna be creating a free course. And it's not just like some cheesy uh, kind of free course where it's like a little bonus or something. I'm gonna be doing like a legit free course. I'm thinking of actually recording it right after this video and I've spent uh, uh, four or five days outlining it. It's gonna be pretty epic. So uh, get in there, get the free course. And by the way, last thing, if you, uh, somebody says no, no naked girl this time, actually she's downstairs. <laughs> But anyway, uh, but I'll do that sometime soon. Um, if you can't do this, by the way, for any reason you can't, which really you should just fly in, especially for those two-day ones, it's like a full-fledged event. If you can't fly in, uh, go to, and you could write this down, go to www.highstatuscommunication.com and do the free call, uh, and you'll still wind up getting that mini course that I'm gonna be creating, okay? So www.highstatuscommunication.com, and we'll put that little link here as well and post it in the comments, or maybe you can have it kind of come up on the bottom of the screen or something like that. And that is a free call system that we do as well. And you can hop on there and that would be very good. And yes, Jessere Buford, this is a live broadcast. I just do these live for fun. I don't have to. I could just record them and post them. Uh, I just think they're kind of fun to do live. All right, so let's go into uh, what I think is most important. All right, so I've been coaching now for about 20 years. And I'm in this sort of weird, unique position where... Um, and I don't even know why I did this in a weird way, but for some weird reason, I felt compelled not just to coach big crowds of people and not just to coach people on my online mentorings or things, you know, the, the programs that I do out in the real world or things like that. But for some weird reason, um, I just took a hobby of kind of plucking certain people up and just nurturing them until they hit the point of becoming self-made millionaires or nurturing them until the point where they got very, very ridiculous social results. And just kind of watching uh, them go from being kind of a zero to a hero, to a, you know, from a zero to a 10. And so um, I've done this in many different ways. Like, you know, I'll be living in some huge mansion in the Hollywood Hills, and I've, I've, I've rented mansions up in the hills for years now, different ones. I'm in this one here for a while now. Um, you know, and then I'll, I'll give them a spare room up in the mansion and there's celebrities coming over and there's other entrepreneurs coming over and I'll allow them to learn from them and then I'll fly them around with me to all these different places that I go and I'll help them to build a business. And I've done this, I've done this a number of people, some are public that you've seen uh, and some are private. And so, you know, I'll sit there with them and work with them on their marketing and all these different things, help them create a product. Again, some of that was, is within our organization. Uh, but some of it are people who are now famous that you watch online, people that you might even watch, or some of are people that have brick and mortar businesses and they do this behind the scenes. So for whatever reason, um, I've just felt compelled over the years to help people do this. It's kind of fun. I do coaching. It's, it's cool to kind of take somebody through the whole process. Sometimes I've partnered with them and um, I've gotten a cut of it and other times I just did it to help and they help my life in different ways. Maybe they're fun or maybe I just like them or maybe they're fun to go out with and hit the club with and you know we just party together a lot. So I've done that with a number of different people. There's some people that are young now who you might know who 
you know, you'll see these like young kids that are living in like baller mansions in LA and you're thinking like, how are they doing that? And these are guys that I've mentored. You might've seen some of them. I was posting one uh, on Instagram the other day. It was really, really fun. He's a great guy. So basically what you have is that um, I've seen this process and what I saw over the years and it's very, very sad is the degree of self-sabotage. And so imagine if you kind of like walk somebody through that process and then you see them starting to make millions of bucks, you see them crushing it socially and they have this incredible, incredible self-sabotage. Now, uh, very quickly, how do they self-sabotage? What does that look like? Like, is it like, you know, self-sabotage, right? It's like this buzzword, <laughs> right? Like, okay, what does that mean? Like, what does that look like in practice? The way that that looks like in practice when somebody self-sabotages is they have what I've often called, you probably heard this, I call it an RAS flip. And an RAS flip is where they tend to focus on the things that matter, the things that are important, the things that have value, the things that are gonna empower them. And what winds up happening is they tend to focus off of that and they start focusing on these stupid problems. And they do so doing something you call a misweighting bias. And a misweighting bias is where, you know, say that we did a, did a half million dollar launch together, we worked on it together. And then let's say, let's say that I like helped you to do that. And then maybe I forgot to send out an email or something. And then, you know, we made, say we made 500 grand, you know, we're each gonna take our cut from that, you know, put some of that into expenses. And then you start screaming, well, you didn't send this email, you didn't send this email, you didn't send this email. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's like, ah, you know, you go all crazy over an email. And then I'm like, bro, like you just made hundreds of thousands of dollars in like a month and a half. Like you, you didn't even graduate college. Like in what world is this? Should we not be like celebrating at Mastro's right now? Like cranking down a Tomahawk steak and like partying and, and having a big party and inviting our friends over, go to like a cool trip. Like, like why are we focusing on this? It's like, we could have made five, 10, ah! you know, and they just go crazy. And then I see it to where like I calm them down from that because I'm usually invested in the person. And then they start like drinking and taking drugs. Uh, they start complaining about things. Like the same person who was like super positive and excited and fun to hang out with is just constantly chronically complaining about all these tiny minor things. And then they'll just make it worse and worse and worse. And then in my case, like I try to compensate. I'm like, like when I'm younger and I was dumb, I'd be like, well, let's just go make like even more money or this or that, you know, and I'll help them make like double that or triple that. And then again, like, you didn't answer the call at exactly 602. It was 603 and a half. Wah! You know, and you're like, we just made a million dollars. Why are you doing this? And they just go crazy, you know? And then, <clears throat> then you know, then I don't see them. And then next thing you know, their lives are crap or they're doing like 10% as well. And I'm like, why? <laughs> like, why, 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 why? Or, you know, I've had it where, um, you know, I'm in a romantic relationship, we'll call it that, right? And I just, you know, maybe I'm seeing different people, but I take a liking to one person. And I'm like, you know, let's, let's kind of, you know, I've, I've never spent a penny on them and we're already romantic without, without me spending a penny. But, you know, I really like the person. I'm like, hey, let's, you know, bring them out on a trip or something like that. You know, they're fun. Maybe they even brought their friends over and we all had like a fun wild time together. They've been really good to me. I want to kind of reciprocate that. I'm like, hey, you know, come to Miami. Hey, come to New York. Let's go to Vegas. Let's go party, you know, things like that. That. And then again, you'll see this where like, you know, as soon as they actually start winning and getting around cool stuff, they start complaining and whining. And I'm like, where's the fun version of you that like I was starting to fall in love with? And they, they can just become very, very negative. So I've seen this um, in many, many, many different relationships over the years. Many of my friends have turned to drugs. Many of my friends have turned to alcohol. Many of my friends have turned to a lot of really, really dark stuff. And it's just sad, you know, you see it and it's, it's, uh, it's just a sad thing that you see. So imagine that you're, you know, watching this over many years and you're, you're really like making a, like a real effort to see people come into completely winning and you really love each of these people. And I don't know, I mean, I try to do things in a win-win where I could benefit in some way, but like 70 to 80% of what I'm doing is to see them win because I take joy from that. And maybe 20 or 30% is for me to win in most of these cases. Um, just because if I doubled down on myself, I could have done even better. And, you know, what winds up happening is you see this and then you see people self-sabotaging and then you start to kind of look at your work and like, you know, as I, as I started to hit about maybe 12 or, I've been doing this about 20 years, I'm 42 now, I've been doing this since I'm 22. And you start to hit, uh, you know, maybe like you're 12 or 15 and you start seeing these kind of like Frankenstein cases of, of situations that were so positive, go sideways. At a certain point, you're like, is there something wrong with the way that I'm approaching this? Like, I feel like, helping people to cross the threshold of having insane, we'll call it social success, <laughs> you know, right? Some insane social success or, you know, some insane financial success. Like, I feel like what I'm doing is good, but it just seems like 
you know, the, the, the higher up they raise, the harder they fall. And, um, you know, Julian has talked a lot about this, and he actually hit the point of extreme uh, popularity. You saw him doing like thousand person crowds and um, his social media was blowing up back in like 2014. And then he, he got into, you know, this kind of like shocky kind of edgy humor. He talks all about this. This is not for me or me talking about him. This is me just recanting what he talks about in all of his videos. And he wound up going down hard, right? And, and Julian was a unique one because he actually got taken down so low that he kind of, uh, he kind of rehabbed himself. You know, he did a lot of, a couple years of trauma healing work and uh, wound up studying trauma healing work because he was on the verge of suicide. And uh, he saw how important that it was. And he actually became a trauma healing coach as a result of that uh, kind of bouncing back. So, you know, he bounced back uh, really, really hard. And then he wound up getting married. He has children. Um, he's a family man now. And he also likes to kind of teach a lot of the uh, communication that we've taught over the years, but taking the part of it that anybody could benefit, men or women, and he calls that high vibe communication. So that's kind of where he's at now, and he's in like a really good place. If you actually look at Julian's social media lately, it's blowing up. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, I work with him and I see his numbers uh, are pretty amazing. He's uh, really, really had a lot of people that have taken his events and uh, work with him and uh, chosen to invest in him, and he's invested them right back and make sure they get results. He's serious about it. I could literally pull out text from Julian where he'll say things like, if somebody gives me one dollar, I take it like they gave me a million dollars. I don't care if they gave me a million or a dollar, I take it serious. So he's very committed, right? So he's in a, in a, in a great path right now. You know, you see that after he kind of fell off and self-sabotage. But a lot of other people who I've seen, um, they, uh, by the way, if you want to see Julian's numbers, go to uh, socialblade.com. It actually shows numbers of how people are doing. Like, man, he's just really had a great year. You should check it out. It's pretty epic. Uh, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so, um, other people, though, who I've seen, they really do self-sabotage. Now, I'm going to talk about why, and I'm going to talk about where I think this comes from. And I also want you to understand that, from my perspective, um, it really does get a bit redundant and ridiculous over time, teaching people personal growth, when you see that degree of uh, self-sabotage, right? Because you, you see people that are talking about how they want to win and how they want to do all these amazing things, and then you're like... Yeah, right, dude. Like you're gonna, you're just gonna do what what almost everybody else that I've seen has done. You're gonna go make some money. You're gonna go have some social success. You're gonna go have some more vitality and more and and win. And then you're gonna ruin it. You're just gonna destroy it. And that's largely what I see. That's not a fun topic because you know when you're first like it, it'd be kind of like if you're not jacked and then you want to get jacked and then some big jack guy is like, you're just gonna self sabotage it. You're like, well. Tell me, the, how do I begin you know, to get to the point where I can build it up and then self-sabotage it, right? You're like, I'm not even there yet, bro. So the self-sabotage topic is my most fascinating topic because what it comes down to is sustained success. You know, what does it mean to have true sustained success? What does it mean to win over the long term? There's no value in making a bunch of money, doing a bunch of drugs and dying. And you might have seen some of my celebrity clients do that. People who you've seen at my events and all of a sudden they're dead from an overdose. And, you know, I've, I've watched this. One, one person who used to come to my uh, events every summer in Vegas, actually very famous guy, he uh, died from uh, a fire and he was probably high uh, and doing whippets and things like that. And he died from a fire. Right, and this was a guy who had uh, sold his company to Amazon for about 800 million. And one of the most beloved, beautiful individuals you'd ever see, and you see the self-sabotage, right? And so it's, it's one of these things where um, you see people dying, you see people getting on drugs, you see all this really bad stuff. You, see, you also see them become egoically uh, power hungry, uh, very, very corrupt and things like that, and they lose sight of why they got into it. So that's my kind of thing that I like, <laughs> okay, is sustained success. Because then it's not this fairy tale. It's not this kind of fake version of success. It's the real version. And so we cover this stuff in, in programs like Julian's that I collaborate with him on, like Transformation Mastery. Um, but I also have a lot of content coming out about it. And one of the things that I talk about is how success in many ways creates a stagnation in the mind. And it creates what I call a parasite. It kind of puts a parasite on your brain. And so what starts to happen is that if somebody gets successful, you're not even really talking to them anymore. You're literally talking at this parasite. Um, I live in Hollywood. I'm, I'm broadcasting right now from the Hollywood Hills in Los Angeles, California, baby. And I, I live out here and I see, um, you know, all the, I'll, I'll see Justin Bieber at the spa all the time. And I'll see people like that. Justin's one of the better ones. Um, but I see people like that. And coming from that kind of background, everywhere I go, not everywhere, but you know, you'll see them out all the time, whether it's hiking, whether it's at restaurants, whether it's at parties, wherever it is. And how often is it that you see 
you know, some really famous person that's rude to the waiter or is not uh, cordial to people around them or things like that. And I'm not trying to look down on it, but what I'm saying is it's not good for them. Look, the waiter is going to be fine, but it's not good for the person's soul who's behaving in that manner. I'm, I'm sure I've had my moments at some point, but, you know, that should be something rare. It shouldn't be a default operating system. So basically what I've seen is that you think that you're getting success and you think it's helping you, but all that it's really doing is softening you. It's lowering evolutionary pressure. It's domesticating you. Usually as you move up the food chain of success, you wind up having to pander to the establishment. Um, the establishment is largely very satanic, very corrupt. And so you wind up having to kind of adapt to their values. I've, I've had a lot of, uh, um, I've, I haven't been to, uh, you know, Davos or Bilderberg or anything like that, but a lot of my clients have. Uh, but I did used to go to Summit Series, which is kind of like, it's kind of like a Davos for uh, younger people and have been around a lot of those people uh, for many years. And so, and, and, I'm, and I roll with the crowds of people that are in Davos or, you know, the, which is like, kind of like the newer uh, front facing version of Bilderberg and things like that. And I see all this stuff up close and you see like, you know, a lot of Christians will, will accuse these people of being Satanists. And whether that's true or not, I, you know, there's like the, uh, <laughs> like the like Bohemian Grove and things where they go do these like weird rituals. I don't know about that. I don't have a strong opinion on that, but I can tell you that I hang out with people like this. I'll be sitting at the table right there, hanging out with the people that help uh, Bill Gates with things like a lot of the new, uh, you know, technology that he puts out there, which I have my own thoughts on. But uh, the point being is, um, you know, I'm around this stuff. I see it up close and I don't like what I see. I see a lot of pandering to the establishment. And what I see is <clears throat> um, people get successful and they start to move up the food chain and they lose their soul. Now, the counter argument to this, which I also don't like, is then all of a sudden a lazy person who's taking no action and hear, you know, they hear about self-sabotage and the Satanism, you know, all stuff. And I'm getting a little, you know, cartoonish with it, but they hear about this. And then the next thing you know, they're like, well, then I'm not even going to try then. You know, all those successful people, they're just big, they're just like these big losers and I'm not even going to try because I don't want to be like a, you know, a, like a pandering Satanist who self-sabotages. But that's not good either because largely what I see in the masses is people that are spaced out on processed foods, their brains aren't functioning, and they're enabling a lot of these bad people. You know, these, der these derping masses are enabling a lot of these horrific, horrific policies that are totally out to lunch. And so it winds up becoming this kind of sub-dom relationship between the elites and the masses, where, you know, the elites are the dom and the, and the masses are the sub, and it's this kind of govern me harder daddy dynamic. And we saw a lot of that in the past couple of years, and, and we've kind of, you know, it's kind of funny, like, it's one of those things where you kind of see things as they escalate, like you can see seeds being planted and you see what winds up happening where, um, you know, a lot of the derping that we've seen happening, whether it's like, you know, the 90s, that, you know, the, the, the 2000s, the 2010s and all that kind of stuff and all this, all this derping and derping and derping and dumbing down. And next thing you know, the public is so dumbed down that, you, you know, you see what happens in the 2020s and you see where that's going. The, the hope is, is that people will begin to recognize what's happening and have a bit of a wake up and we can see an awakening here. That's the hope. So this is the stuff that I'm passionate about is how do we kill that mental parasite that gets on the mind of a pandering elite? How do we kill the mental parasite that gets on top of the mind of somebody who's successful? That's what I care about. So I made an article about this. It's actually... Uh, over on the uh, Owen Cook free tour channel, and you can look up in the community section, I have an article about it, and I was talking about how when I talk about this with people, and I, I really go in and I show evidence of it, I show case studies of it, I, you know, I, I'm not here to like win somebody over to my opinion, I'm honestly just there to present data and allow you to make your own decision. I mean, everybody, you know, has the ego to win people over, but largely I'm trying to present data. And what happens a lot of the time is you'll see the person twitching and you'll see them, like I was actually over day at a very wealthy guy's crib just the other day and he, he's sitting in his hot tub and I got some good friends there and you know, they're recommending uh, that he does some coaching with me. And I'm sitting there talking to him and I say to myself, do I want to tell him the truth of what I really believe in or do I want to present to him this kind of breadcrumb trail that allows him to come to this on his own and doesn't freak him out. And uh, this is a very successful guy. So I have a lot of incentive to kind of, you know, do the breadcrumb trail and kind of let him ease into the epiphanies and da da da. But I'm a bit of a prankster at heart, <laughs> kind of crazy. So I'm just like, I'm just gonna tell him. I'm just gonna tell him what I really think. And so I basically just show him that his life is to some extent fake. He's been in a pandering pattern. Um, and that basically by me helping him to have even more success, 
I'm actually entrapping his freaking soul in this sort of comfort zone that's gonna hurt him more than help him. Like you take, you take somebody like that with that much cash and you start teaching them all the different social skills so that you know maybe their dating life can get crazy or things like that. You think that's gonna wake them up spiritually? No, that's gonna put them deeper into their slumber and not help them at all. So there's a specific way to help somebody who's in that mode that is gonna make a tremendous difference on their life and there's a way that's gonna hurt them. And I've had rich clients where I'm helping them and you know I'm helping them say with their social skills and they're hitting me up with like, you know, maybe the Instagram profile of different people they're meeting and people that are very attractive that they're meeting and that they've had some great success with. <laughs> a lot of success. And, you know, they're, they'll be hitting me up with three or four of those a week. And I'm like, okay, great. I guess I'm a good coach. I've got them killing it. But I look at where they're coming from. I'm like, I think they're just going deeper into a slumber. And the best thing to wake them out of that slumber is pain. The best thing that could happen to them would be to have their business implode. The best thing that could happen to them would be to go through a total, utter self-destruction. So that's the content that I'm passionate about. It's not putting somebody deeper to sleep by helping them to win so much that life gets too comfortable. It's about showing them a process of winning that allows them to win in a way that's going to also wake them up at the same time. It's going to make it to where they win. They've got the health, wealth, relationship, higher purpose. They've got all that. We'll call it, we'll say that lightly. It's a much more extreme version of that. But it's also that they're more present to the moment. They're more um, spiritually expanded. They've been stretched. They're awake. They are uh, connected to life in a more profound level. They care more about what, the, what is actually important in life. That is what I care about. Now, the challenge is, you might have heard me talking a little bit about this, but I've basically just spent the past two years in the wilderness. I'm about to head probably over to Alaska, and I'm going to be in Denali, the, the biggest uh, mountain in North America, and I'm going to be in Kenai Fjords and Glacier Bay and, uh, you know, Fairbanks and Anchorage and all these beautiful places, okay, Gustavus and all this stuff. And, you know, I'll be out there in nature connecting from my perspective, connecting to God and not like in some weird way, like, oh God, like speaking in tongues or anything, but just the way that everybody does, the way that any human has access to of connecting to the beauty of life. And, you know, me being out there, I'm going to shoot some amazing videos, I hope, for the series. We'll see how I do. And maybe even, uh, I might even grab a couple quick ones just to post uh, maybe on this channel, like some couple quickies, you know, some basic fundamentals. But, you know, when I'm out there and I'm trying to connect spiritually, that's not advancing my business. Like, yes, the videos will be good and they'll probably get some good replays. But, like, the way to advance your business is not to, you know, fly for a two, three-week trip to Alaska, burn down $30,000 in pre-production and uh, production and then another 10K or something in post-production or who knows what to get out like three videos, you know, releasing on a, on a non-YouTube optimized schedule of only once a week and not putting out some phone video seven days a week with the shorts, which I really should do at some point as well because they're not mutually exclusive. But you catch my point, right? I'm not doing that for business. I'm doing that because, yeah, I'm going to build a business from it, but I'm also doing it in a way that feeds the spirit, in a way that allows you to be expansive. I'll be there with my children. I want, um, there's uh, 30,000 grizzly bears in Alaska. And I think there's only like a couple thousand in mainland North America. So I want my children to be near the grizzly bears, to look grizzly bears in the eye, to, you know, to see uh, whales in the ocean, to, you know, to see glaciers that are, it's called calving. <laughs> it's this thing called glaciers where they're calving and glaciers are falling into the water and connecting to God's creation. And yeah, we'll do some videos out there and we'll make some money out of that. But it's more about connecting to our creator and, and, and connecting to the present moment and doing that and making money at the same time as that but not making that the only thing. If anything, when you stare into the void of you know, some, some glacier that's the size of an apartment building crashing into the ocean or looking at you know, the greatest predator on land or things like that, that's connecting you to the bigger picture of life that like, you're gonna die. This world is beautiful. This, this world is, is complicated. This world is special. And you're a tiny little flea in it. You're not some super king and you're not a god. And, you know, that is one of the main principles in the Bible is, you know, it talks about, they, they say, putting God first and realizing that you're not God or making other things God or making your money God or ego God, right? Now, what does that mean, making it God? Like, what, what do you mean my ego is God? Well, it's, it's it, we, we often have what you'd almost call like an erotic relationship with maybe the person we're obsessed with or an erotic relationship with our ego or an erotic relationship with our money or our erotic relationship with our success. Now that's a huge upgrade from a derping loser who, and I mean, nobody's a loser, we're all God's creation, but you know, they're losing in life. That is a, a huge upgrade from a derping loser who's like, I'm not gonna try because I don't want to self-sabotage and you know, become an egomaniac, right? Like, no, that's not the answer either. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? That's also not the answer. You know, the answer is that is the middle path, which is um, to be very successful so that you can go see the beauty of life and share, you know, there's, there's a beautiful feeling being out at a expensive steak restaurant with a prime cut steak and, and inviting 10 of your friends and paying the bill, you know, covering the two or $3,000 bill. There's a beautiful experience of, of meeting somebody out at a bar or club who's absolutely attractive and that you're absolutely compelled to meet and then being, you know, back at your place with them and just lying there together in ecstasy together and just like soaking up life and there's is something beautiful or meeting a significant other that you connect with or being there with your children, right? There, there's these beautiful moments, you know, taking your, getting to take your children on a $30,000 trip or things like that. There's beautiful moments, but is the tail wagging the dog, right? What is it that you're connecting to most? Is it the gratitude of what you've received, the gratitude for God's creation and saying, thank you, thank you so much. And how can you, how can I bring that energy into me? How can I bring that flow state into me? How can I recognize not my greatness in this, but my smallness, right? And, and weirdly, you know, they say the meek shall inherit the earth. It's not, it's not about it's not about, the, the meek shall inherit the earth. It's not about being some derping, lazy, apathetic loser and then saying, well, the meek shall inherit the earth and wasting your beautiful life that you've been given. But in my view, it's about maximizing the life that you've been given and um, making a lot of money and, and, and having a lot of social success and many types of success and, and being able to share that, maybe make a YouTube channel, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe make a, a social media where you share it or whatever. But it's also about, um, it's, it's about enjoying the wealth of life and the bounty of life and the harvest of life, but having gratitude and realizing that you're just so lucky to be alive at all in this enormous galaxy that has so few people in it. And so for me, you know, teaching and coaching success has to put that first. And it has to be to where if I'm helping you to get very, very successful, it has to place that at the forefront and not... Um, not, not just put your ego at the forefront or not just put material gain at the forefront, but doing things that are, you know, that the ego would like, like winning and doing things like being successful, but not doing so from a framework of uh, stealing your soul, right? And, and really forming the sort of stagnant energy in your head that creates a parasitic energy. I'll go into in other videos about what I mean by a parasite. But anyway, I talked about this in the free tour channel. And um, I was mentioning how when I talk to this about the sort of parasite concept to people, um, I'll see them oftentimes kind of freak out and it's literally because the parasite in their brain is like, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away, <laughs> right? And it's kind of crazy, okay? So seeing that the other day though, just seeing the guy, I was, I was teaching this wealthy guy about what I think is real success. And you can see the parasite in him, he's shaking and he's twitching and things like that. Um, I made a little list here and the list, uh, it's just some basics. And I'm going to wind up making a course out of this. Now, by the way, you're going to, I'm going to make, I'm, I'm probably going to shoot the course right after I finish shooting here, but I'm going to make a whole course on this. It's going to be dope. And, you know, I'll share it with you a little bit here. But if you want the course, uh, again, we've got these free events, selfhelpfreetour.com, uh, Philadelphia, New York City, Seattle, San Fran, Chicago are coming up. Um, but I'd also love to see you. In, uh, we're we're going to do a tour of Texas. That'll be Dallas, Houston, Austin. We're going to do a tour of Florida, Jacksonville, uh, Tampa, Orlando, Miami, um, you know, we're going to do uh, San Diego, Los Angeles. We're going to do a bunch of spots. And I got the team doing mid-sized cities all over the world. So no matter where you are in the world, check that out. But also, if for any reason you can't make it to one of these, and I'm going to make this dope course, I'm going to put it out soon. Um, if you want the course that I'm going to do on this, and I'll, I'll teach a little bit of the course right now, but if you want the proper course, I'm going to make it very streamlined and organized, uh, then what you could do is do a free call. And there's a process that we take you through at the free tour, and it's super duper dope. That's the things we don't post. We kind of post me doing rants, um, but the process we don't post. And uh, we can actually do that exact same process with you on the phone. So you could even type that link in. Uh, it'll be www.highstatuscommunication.com. So if you want to go through that process, we'll take you through that process over the phone. And that's just meant to help you a lot. So we're going to actually write that right down here in just a second. My, my boy here, he's just writing it out. Ibrahim's just kind of typing this out. But if you go to High Status Communication, just sign up for a free call. We'll get you on the phone and we'll send you uh, this course as well. And you can actually talk to my team. I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching service that I do uh, for free. And it, what, what I find is it actually helps the business because if we take you through that process and you like it, maybe you wind up doing some business with us. But the truth is completely for free either way. So I'd recommend that you take advantage no matter what life position you're in. Uh, highstatuscommunication.com. Uh, fill out a quick form over there. We make the form a couple questions because we do kind of want to screen people that are actually serious about doing it. If we just put like 
put the phone number, then we get like thousands of these things. So I think there's like a couple questions in there, and then that's for people that are serious. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn, um, what it is that I'm going to explain here, I'm actually going to turn that into a course, and uh, I'll take you through a, couple, a little bit of it here, okay? And then what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to make a course about this. So what are some of the things that I think a new person would learn, right? Because I'm talking about this like, once you made $13 million, there's a parasite on your head, and that's what I care about. And you're like, dude, <laughs> you're like, I want to be the Lindsay Lohan. Like, I want to get to Lindsay Lohan at the peak first, and then have the meltdown and, and the coke, the coke use. You know, I want to be, I want to be Britney on the video before I become, you know, Britney later, right? <laughs> you're like, cool, bro. Like, that's nice that at 42, that's where your head is at, but I'm not 42, and I just want to be super rich and famous, and I don't care. So I'm going to talk about some things that are good for newer people here. I'm going to make a course about this, because the truth is, is that even though I'm not hyper-passionate about these ideas, if you're new, this winds up becoming the connective tissue um, to a lot of, you know, very, very powerful concepts about your true ascension, but I've got to get you there in the first place. So um, the first one is committing to long-term mastery. And that is something that I think a lot of people don't get. Uh, George Leonard, he wrote a book called Mastery. He talks about the dabbler, the obsessive, and the hacker, and the different problems in that. You can kind of just tell by the words of what those are. Uh, the next one is to become a master, learn from those who have achieved mastery, and helped others to produce the same results. So basically, in mastery, what he explains is that when you put in like the 10,000 hours, you become a master. Some people have debated that number, whatever, whatever. Um, but the main key is, however long it is gonna take you to get good, uh, you gotta learn from the right person. So that's another thing that you've got to do. Uh, another thing is you've got to find people um, who you can model. Success leaves clues. Uh, you've got to look at the beliefs, paradigms, habits, behaviors, and systems. Use of time, physiology, focus. Uh, proximity is power. And so you've got to get around people and you've got to model people who are successful. Um, take an identity as a lifelong learner. Being a loser is not who you are. Uh, <laughs> okay, don't make an identity out of being a loser. Uh, next up, you've got to move from protection to growth. Uh, there is, this is, I'm just going to do whole other videos on this. This is like, uh, okay, so just take the course and I'll, I'm going to just flesh all this stuff out. It's like, talk about this till the sun rises. Uh, basically, a lot of what you're in now is a protection pattern. It's an energetic contraction. It's very, very sad. You got to move into growth, okay? The next one is you got to know what good really is. And that's a big problem. You see this in, uh, all these like videos, there's like a lot of cringe videos that come out that don't like our stuff and all this kind of stuff. And the problem is that the people that you'll see in the comments don't have a context of what good is, right? They're like, you know what I think good is? <laughs> right? They're like, I think good is just gotta be yourself, man. And like, lift some weights and clean your car. And I'm like, you don't know what good is. Like, you don't have a context for like being out at a nightclub and like watching somebody smash it. You don't know what that looks like. So that's another problem is you probably have a limited paradigm of what good is and you've got to understand what good is and you've also got to understand things like crutches. Like a lot of people that you'll see they're using alcohol as a crutch or they're using uh, prepared lines as a crutch or they're using um, all these little gimmicks as crutches or you know, maybe they need to, maybe they need to have uh, you know, pre-done social proof which could be good but it is a gimmick. You know, which you could still do stuff like that and it's great but you shouldn't use it as a crutch. So you've gotta get a sense of like what somebody who's ultra rich looks like, what their habits look like, somebody who's ultra successful socially looks like, what their habits look like. You just gotta start getting a sense of what good actually is and what does a newbie, intermediate, or advanced look like. Most of the advice that you're getting You'll even see people who don't like our stuff. There's, there's a lot of people who don't like our stuff. And invariably, like, I'll read that because I'm open to feedback. I'm like, damn, like, you don't like our stuff? Well, then, you know, what don't you like about it? How can I, how can I help you to like it more? And what I realize is the failure is at a point where they don't know what good is. And then they're protecting their ego, right? Remember, I just, the, the previous uh, thing I was talking about was contraction. They're protecting their ego by, like, you know, I'll have like 20,000 hours of content out, and then they'll go through it and cherry pick for something controversial or like these obviously sarcastic jokes that I'm making, like jokes that have like a full context when you're watching them, but then when you cut out of context, look like horrific. And they do that as a way of protecting their ego. It's a contraction rather than looking at what's actually being said. I'd love to see a critique video someday where like it showed the good and the bad, and it was like feedback that I could benefit from, but it's never that. And, and if that ever came out, I would actually listen to it. I'm a very open person. I always want to do better and always can do better. But what it typically is, is it's people who are wanting to stay in that contraction, wanting to kind of stay where they're at. They don't know what good is. And then they sort of turn it in this like alien UFO weirdness as a way to kind of clown it, which is fine. 
but don't be one of those people that's stuck on that. You can even laugh at stuff like that. Like I, I can laugh at it myself, but don't actually be that person that's broke, that's not successful, that hates life, and then just like, Get, your only pleasure in life is to clown other people. It's got like it's okay to clown other people a little bit, and have fun with it, but it can't be what defines who you are. Okay. Uh, the next one is um, you should look at examples of transformation. And so what you really want to be doing is you want to be seeing people that started off when they sucked, and then seeing what they look like by the end. For example, I had a, a very controversial video that came out where I was uh, you know really kind of laying into this young man who's really really great person, and a lot of people saw that and they said, oh. Um, you know, it was this video that I had called uh, High Status uh, Communication Manifesto or something. And then uh, somebody made it like a TikTok account of me and they posted that and went viral and it was like on all these different like commentary YouTubes and stuff like that. And they're like, look at him picking on this kid and da da da. And what they don't realize is he went on to be very successful. Like I, I literally have in my WhatsApp, he's like, I have a Instagram model girlfriend. <laughs> So crazy, you know, and you can see on my TikTok, I have clips there of him just smashing it, and he that was showing him uh, progressing at the event itself. That was several, that was four full days of coaching that we did. Um, but then later, you even see him, uh, you know, having a better uh, dating life and things like that. It's it's awesome. Well, who's the person who hates him or doesn't like him? I believe in him. I believe that he can take feedback. I believe that if he's going to pay me, that he doesn't need me to give him a hug and tell me he's great. I believe that if he's going to pay me money, he wants real help. He's not one of those people who's just looking for like a 30 second TikTok video. Have you ever seen how on TikTok, a lot of the advice is like really, really surface level. And it's, it, it's like, it makes sense quickly, but then say that I were to put out a long form content, like how long is this video at this point? 36 minutes at this point, right? Like, you know, they'd be like 36 minutes. Like where's the three funky tips in the 15 second video? And it's like, what are you really going to learn in 15 seconds? I, don't get me wrong. Like, I should do TikTok more. Like, I, 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 it's not that hard to take my existing videos, you know, find the little simple parts and post them. I should do more of that, and I'm going to actually. And and Julian's had great success with YouTube Shorts of late. It's getting he's blowing up with it. I, I should be doing that too. But the point is, is that like that's good business, like for us, like that's good for Julian. That's good for me. But ask Julian himself. <laughs> Julian himself. <laughs> ask Julian himself. Um, you know, what he thinks that you should be watching, he'd tell you, watch my longer videos. The short ones are cool for entertainment, the longer ones are where the learning's at, and the real learning is in the mentoring that he does itself. Same with myself, okay? So, you know, 15 seconds is good, but you gotta go a little deeper, okay? At least that's, right. that's up to you if you want to or not, but that is highly recommended. So you wanna see examples of transformation. That, that young fellow who I love to death and talk to, love this guy, seeing his transformation is an example of somebody who sucks and then going on to have a transformation. He may slip back, he may have self-sabotage, he might get it for a bit and mess it up, but my job is to put him in the best position possible. So that creates the kind of buy-in um, where you're like, wait a minute, he's succeeding and I'm not? Like, this guy's succeeding and I'm not? Blah! Okay, so that's another example um, you know, of what you should be looking at. Uh, another one is, and, and this is massive, is a reality check. And reality check, what I mean by that, is that you are hating your life in many cases, but what you've done is you've learned to numb it. So I'd recommend that you just connect yourself to your pain. Um, I've actually gotten really good at that. Like, um, as much as we would teach to be like high vibration and positive, one thing that I've gotten good at is like, if I can tell that something doesn't resonate with me at like a soul level, like as melodramatic as that sounds, like my soul is gonna resonate at a soul level. But like, as dumb as that sounds, like there is something to that. And you know, if you're a 42 year old grown man, and you're doing things that you don't truly spiritually resonate with, and you're, you're getting into the middle of your life, you should let that hurt. Like, you should let that burn. Don't hide from the burn. Some depression or trauma or things like that, in many cases, can be like a deep condition that you need to get help with and that you need to really take action to fix. But that's not 100% of negative emotions. Like, some negative emotions is that your soul and your, and your psyche can see that you're messing up and it's kind of burning and poking at you to get you to fix it. So, you know, chronic trauma or chronic negativity, fix that and get help but something like you're kind of messing up and the, and the negativity is your body's way of trying to help you to recognize that, I would actually connect to that. That's not, that's not a bad thing. Um, another one is you've got to learn to generate motivation and recognize the power of urgency. Okay, and so I'm going to do a course on this. I'm, going to, I'm just going to put this together in a mini course probably right after I shut this off. But these are other things and then that leading towards massive action. Okay, um, I don't know. I've got a lot of notes in here. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm kind of proud of it. So I'm kind of, you know, throwing this thing together here. Um, so that's, that's me just kind of preparing a course. So I'm, I'm actually gonna do uh, you know, a, a mini course on this. I'm gonna just do it. And if you wanna get that, 
Uh, the two ways to do it, I'm, I'm gonna shoot it after this and you'll probably see me kind of pumping this and doing my little promo thing and going, sign up now for the mini course, everybody. You're gonna see me doing that. Uh, but I do it out of love. I do it because you know, it's a win-win. It's a win when I see you getting more deeply involved with what I'm doing, and it's a win uh, for you. So basically, again, go to www.selfhelpfreetour.com. We have upcoming events in Philadelphia, New York, Seattle, uh, San Fran, and Chicago, and those are gonna be so sick. Um, but also, uh, we're doing a tour of Texas, all over Texas, all over Florida, even little cities in Florida, we're gonna be doing them. Uh, we're gonna do LA, we're gonna do San Diego, we're gonna do Boston, we're gonna do DC. So we've got a lot coming up on the tour. I'm gonna be on tour. I actually have a, uh, an ACL uh, tear. I, I tore my ACL skiing. And so I'm gonna go into a uh, uh, ACL surgery in uh, December. I think I'm gonna be using, probably leading towards Tom Brady's surgeon, funny enough. Uh, like a guy named like Neil L. Atriich or something. I've got to learn how to pronounce his name. I might use him or uh, might do some other really good doctors that have uh, done some great work. So I, yeah, I tore my ACL out skiing a full tear um, and I'll be in doing some rehab on my leg after that. But I'm walking around great. You know, I'm, I'm walking fine. I'm moving around fine, but I, I probably should uh, probably do the surgery. I'm looking at stem cells, stuff like that. So I'm going to just smash out a bunch of these events. Um, and I want to do that just to get a lot of footage so I can post it on YouTube. But most of what also what we do at the event is actually the process itself that we don't post. And we do that process at the event itself. So try to fly in if you can. Um, or, um, you know, there's a guy here, uh, Jesse Ray Buford. Are you again? He says, I'm too, too poor right now to travel. Um, Jesse Ray, let me tell you something, okay? I uh, do these free events. And I'll run them like, I don't know. I mean, the ones in the evening, I'll run like five to seven hours. Uh, but some of these are in the day. Like some of these free events are in the day. And I run them, uh, you know, 2 p.m., sometimes till 2 a.m. It's like 12 hours. And I'll, I'll often do less than five minutes of sales of these things. I'll do some sales at it and that'll kind of cover the cost. But it's like, dude, it's like five minutes. I mean, some of these events, if it's two days, could be like a, a 24 hour event, okay? And so um, I do these events uh, because they can, you know, if I do a little bit of sales there, they can cover the uh, expenses. Um, and I have no shame in that or anything. I think that's good that I do that. Uh, but in addition, um, I do it because I want to get some YouTube videos. That's for me, because I, I just think it kind of makes me look cool to speak in front of an audience. I love speaking in front of audiences. I'm, a, I'm like a born uh, seminar speaker. My great-grandfather was actually a uh, preacher, right? My great-grandfather, Russell Cook, and he was actually a preacher in the First World War and the Second World War. Uh, at least that's how I understand it. Got to meet him uh, before he passed when I was young. He passed at like 98. Um, but I also do it, let, let me tell you something. Uh, Jesse Ray Buford, you don't have one penny, and I know that. And that's why I do the free events, bro. Because it's a chance for somebody like you to be in an inspiring environment for a couple days. And you know, it's one of those things like, like Jesse, I would ask you, Jesse Ray Buford, what city do you live in? You know, I would, and, and I'm gonna walk you through this, what it would involve for you to actually come and meet up with me. And I think it's beneficial if you could post where you're from. I, I will tell you, I'll walk you through how you could come and uh, come and uh, link up with me for free. I'll, I'll walk you through how to do it. It's really not that hard. I, I would dare you to do it. And not because I need to meet you, bro, but because if, if this, I, I'm not saying that every person in the world needs to go do this, but if you're inspired by what I do and you're inspired by the work that we would do together over a weekend and I'm doing it for free at a free event, again, self-help free tour, you can see the cities. If you're inspired by that, I do real events. Like these are the kind of events that would normally cost a couple thousand bucks and you can fly in for them. Um, flying in for a one night one is smart, but uh, even doing a several night one is, or, or doing, doing the two nights the best, but even the one night. So Jesse, you live in El Paso. Ibrahim, go look on, like, let me show you how I think. Like, how far is El Paso from, uh, you know, Austin or Dallas or, um, or Houston or things like that, right? Like, if we look this up on Google Maps, Ibrahim's literally looking this up on Google Maps right now, okay? And he's gonna tell you. And I bet, I bet you, bro, I was thinking you're gonna be coming hella far. And I bet you you're not even coming that far. And... So type that in El Paso, and then let's do Austin. You know, I bet you that's probably the closest is Austin. Funny enough, El Paso, I see it's right across from Juarez. So that's quite the, quite the situation there. So, okay, so El Paso is actually eight hours from Austin. <laughs> that's pretty, that is freaking far, man. Um, what's the closest one? Is it Dallas? Is it Houston? Well, look, whatever, whatever the, it's actually a little further. Man, Texas is a big state, yo. That is, I was thinking it was like, two, I was thinking it was two hours, bro. Well, that's my bad. Uh, yeah, Dallas is like nine hours, and then Houston, I think, is even, you could check that. It's a little, man, that's a, is that, is that like, man, that is further than I thought. So what can I tell you, bro? I guess it was not as close as I thought. But look, um, the truth is, is imagine 
like, let me make this point to you, okay? Imagine if you just said to yourself, I'm gonna find a buddy, like I'm gonna use the skills that Owen taught me for socializing, and then I'm going to go talk to a bunch of people, and I'm gonna convince them to drive there with me, right? Like for example, I did uh, a couple parties that were a million dollars per party, and actually competed with uh, Hugh Hefner in the Playboy Mansion. Do you think that I paid a million dollars to do a party? No, what I did was I found an older guy who even I got to mentor, I mean he's mega rich, and he put up the money. And then I helped him with the social skills and helped him to meet people. And as a result, it was a win-win. So that's the same kind of thing. Look, if I can find somebody to help me to put on a, a couple of million dollar parties and compete with Hugh Hefner here in LA and build my reputation, why don't you find someone that can drive? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you can find somebody who can drive. And from that standpoint, um, find somebody to drive you and then come and attend the free event, come to the one in Austin. Bro, like not even kidding, man. You should just, you should come to the Austin Summit or something like that, because that's actually like a couple days and it's cheap. And we're actually about to put the price to that to 3,000 bucks next year. You're gonna see me actually do that. But right now it's really cheap. I'm not even saying that to market it, I mean it. You know, it's like, it's dirt cheap. And if you came and you did that, then come down there. And you know what I would do? Because you're in that situation, I would call around the room and I'd say, can anybody put this guy up? Can anybody put this guy up on their floor, or their couch or whatever? And you'd find somebody. And let me tell you something. If I couldn't find someone for you, I'd put you up in my crib. <laughs> I've done that a couple times. But the truth is that I'm influential enough and I know how to use my social skills, especially in a room that I'm running. And, and, and Jen Pachi, yes, there's events in New York City. It's listed right here. <laughs> Just look at the sign and go to selfhelpfreetour.com, see if your city's on it. But the point being is like, you know, I would literally help you to find someone to crash and if you couldn't crash, I'd do it myself. I'd, I'd let you crash myself. Bro, I'd, I'd, I'd have no problem doing that. But the truth is I'm always gonna find someone to help you to crash with. And you know why I'm not afraid to make that, to make that uh, offer? Here's why, right? Because part of me when I make that offer, I'm like, if I make that offer, hundreds of people are gonna show up and they're all gonna demand that I find them a place to say, bro, I could make that offer to a 100,000 viewed video and you wanna know how many people would actually show up and ask me to help them find a place to stay? Two. It'd be two out of 100,000 because the world is not filled with action takers. It just would never happen. And, and I'm gonna tell you another thing, bro. You're not gonna do it either. I'm, I, I hate saying it. it's so negative. <laughs> Coming from a coach, it's kind of negative. But like, it just, the, the addiction to staying where you're at is so strong that even with me talking to you right here through a live, out of anybody I could be talking to, and me saying, come down there, find a way down there, and telling you how to do it, and walking you through the process, saying, I'm gonna find a place for you to stay, and you can crash with me if I can't. You still won't do it. And it, it's sad because the addiction is so strong. And that's what the mini course is really about. Um, it's because I realized that it, it, you know, I can tell you the truth about your life, but there's a parasite living in your fucking brain and it just doesn't want to come off. <laughs> you know, it's like, if I came there, I might have to get this freaking parasite off my head and I have to start winning. You don't want to do that. And it's self-sabotage. And that's why the single most uh, thing that I'm passionate about is getting rid of that freaking parasite, okay? But what I'm also gonna start doing is creating that kind of connective tissue um, to help people to uh, get that off. And by the way, again, uh, if you want to, I'm going to create the mini course probably tonight and we'll have to edit it and we'll get it up pretty soon. Uh, www.selfhelpfreetour. Um, we're doing a lot of events, a lot more than even what you're seeing here. Uh, and then I'd love to meet you in person. This, the, the, the free tour events are amazing. Um, probably as my career grows, uh, I'm not going to do free events cause it's really expensive and uh, it's tricky to put that on and budget and stuff. So I'll probably wind up charging more money as a screen. Probably start off at like 97. And in the, and in the end, those same events will probably be a couple thousand. But I do them for free right now. They're really good. So uh, loaded with value, gonna change your life. So again, go to the free tour. And if you're watching this right now, just sign up now. And then as soon as we have that course ready, we're gonna send it over to you and you can await the free tour. And if for any reason you can't uh, do the free tour, well then uh, just jump on the free call. And Ibrahim is gonna list a Link for that, www.highstatuscommunication.com. Hop right on that free call, fill out a couple little quick things, uh, and we'd love to chat you. And we'll take you through the exact same process anyway, and we'll send you over that course, and it's gonna be just awesome, okay? So highstatuscommunication.com, and you could do that. So anyway, that was kind of the topic today. Like I said, I was gonna try to do a little bit of discussion about what I'm passionate about, uh, but also uh, the beginning of a couple paradigms just to kind of prepare you to have this kind of transformation. And uh, I'm probably put together a little course on it, make it a little more organized and structured. I'm gonna work on that. Um, and just put that out for free if you sign up for the free event as a way to prepare you. And I feel like that will actually allow me to go a lot deeper at the free event. It's gonna kind of prepare you. Or if you get on the free call, it's the same kind of thing where, you know, part of going through the process that we take you through on the free call, 
uh, that as you see us do our work in the future, you'll be a lot more prepared for it. And uh, I think if we help you, uh, you'll be more involved with what we do, and that's only good for us. So would love to see you on there, highstatuscommunication.com on that free call. And likewise, uh, dub, and that's a free call that you could do from anywhere in the world. Set that up, put in your info, and we'll get on the phone with you. Uh, you'll be very happy that you did it. A lot better than just watching a YouTube video. Uh, and likewise, www.selfhelpfreetour.com to come and link up in person, okay? I love you very much. I'm very, very excited to see you at the tour. Many, 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 many more uh, events than just this year. So go see if your city's on the list and find a way to fly in. It's gonna be dope, okay? Love you very much. And I'm gonna wrap it up now and I'm gonna go do a little bit of course creation. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed what it was that we were doing. And I can see a lot of, I just wanna thank people um, there's been some people here giving me some props. Uh, names Jackal, thank you. Jeffrey Jensen, thank you. Lane Rose, thank you. Um, and thank you for, yeah, thank you for mentioning the great things that we do at those events. I love you guys too. Care T, love you too, bro. And uh, I'll be back with more. We're gonna do some more lives this week and have some pretty dope stuff coming out. Love you very much, and I'll see you soon. Remember, come and meet me in person. And if you can't get to this, even though I recommend that you do, recommend that you uh, jump on the free call www.highstatus.